The tendency of the rate of profit to fall disproven. Capitalism, in Marx's view, was destined to fail, or as he said it, capitalism had planted the seeds for its own destruction. One of his theories to justify his claim that capitalism was destined to fail and that socialism would inevitably succeed it is the theory of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall, also known as the TRPF. The tendency of the rate of profit to fall states that the rate of profit, which is the ratio of profit to the amount invested in capital, decreases over time. The T RPF essentially states that the greater amount of capital invested, the less profit will be generated over time. This creates a contradiction. As more capital investment occurs, less profits are made, and less profits will lead to less capital investment. Thus, more capital investment will lead to less capital investment over time. Marx assumed that profit can only be derived from surplus value meaning that the capitalist effectively forces the worker to sell his labor power for less than what the value of the pro then for less than the what the value of the product the capitalist is selling is in more simple terms the worker has to work longer and more than what the product's actual average labor time is for only the benefit of the one who owns the capital Surplus value or surplus labor time is the main source of revenue in the capitalist mode of production, according to Marx. In the short term, in order to generate more profit, the capitalist has to extract more value from the worker's labor and thus substitute machinery for labor. However, Marx in the long term believed that labor would eventually be squeezed out in favor of fully a full capital production. Capitalism, according to Marx, was inefficient, produced high unemployment, idle resources, and the pro and production of goods, which meant no real demand. The capitalist would lower his own profits by foregoing surplus value while creating a larger and larger reserve army of labor. This is what Marx meant by capitalism sowing the seeds of its own, of its own destruction. The proletariat, along with the unemployed class, would rebel and overthrow the bourgeoisie class, establish common ownership of capital goods, and a dictatorship of the proletariat. Socialism. Then, socialism would lead to communism, the final stage of human evolution, of human social evolution. A stateless, classless, moneyless society. Everyone would work and produce for the benefit of everyone, or from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. Classes would not exist, and the exploitation of men by other men would cease. This theory is one of the most important Marxist theories, as this theory is necessary for the explanation of why capitalism would inevitably fail. TRPF, like other Marxist principles, is based off the labor theory of value. Disproving the labor theory of value alone disproves a bulk of this theory, as it states that labor is the only way to generate a profit or quote-unquote steal value from the worker's labor. Capital without labor, in Marx's view, cannot generate a profit because it does not rely on surplus value as its source of revenue, and thus no economic value has been added since no labor was used in the production process. However, as I explained in my other videos, labor is not what determines the value of a product. It is how much an acting individual places importance on a particular economic good or service. And different individuals value the economic product differently at given points and time. The statement that value is subjective and is not determined through labor, nor can it be objectively measured, makes this theory crumble like a house of cards. This theory relies on the premise that profit is only generated when labor is used because labor creates the economic value of a, of a product according to the labor theory of value, and thus surplus value cannot exist without labor involved in the production process. However, the consumers who the capitalist is trying to sell the product to do not concern themselves with the costs or production process needed to create the product. Instead, the consumers consider how much importance they place on this good and how much they are willing to pay for it, and whether the product is valuable enough for the acting individuals, aka consumers, at a specific price in order to enter into, into the exchange. Thus, profit can be derived through any production process, either using capital-intensive production or labor-intensive production, as labor is not what determines the, 
the value of a product. Rather, it is the demands and preferences of acting individuals or con and consumers. The final nail in the coffin for the TRPF is the simple fact and statement that no rate of profit exists in the market economy. The rate of profit, the ratio of profit to, to the amount invested in capital, simply is not a phenomena that exists in the capitalist economy. According to Ludwig von Mises, rate of profit is an absurd expression based on the false assumption that there exists a relationship between capital and profit. Profits are earned by superior foresight in, in adapting production to meet future shifts in consumer demand before competitors are aware of the need for such adaptation. Since profits cannot be related mathematically to superior foresight, there can be no meaningful rate of profit. Profit has no direct correlation to capital investment, nor does profit have any, have any direct relationship with labor either. While capital, land, and labor are needed to create consumer goods or services, profits are not earned by simply manufacturing consumer goods. They are earned by selling consumer goods to consumers. And in order to sell goods or services to individuals, you must figure out the demands and preferences of individuals in the market. Since it is impossible to know the demands of every consumer, the ones who predict the market the best and use resources the most efficiently make a profit, and the ones who cannot and use resources inefficiently or wastefully to meet no demand have losses. The market, contrary to what the TRPF states, is not static. The demands of consumers are ever-changing, and there are many different types of products, business structures, and markets. As long as scarcity and the private ownership of the means of production exists, which is how production operated, with some exceptions, since the Neolithic times, profits and losses are inevitable because of the ever-changing demands and preferences of individuals. Profits are not going anywhere and will continue to be the driving force as the division of labor flowers and the market expands over time. Socialism is not inevitable. Rather, it must be forced through the systemic violation of property rights and enforced via the organization which, spe which specializes in that field, the state. In fact, capitalism is not only inevitable, but will continue to exist as long as private property is necessary to resolve the issue of social order. Scarcity. Scarcity. The finite resources compared to the infinite demands and wants of individuals will always exist and thus capitalism will always exist in some capacity or another.